So explain to us exactly what's being done, what's IBM's role in this thing, how could we actually maybe get a vaccine a bit sooner? So the largest supercomputer in the world is the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, uh, constructed by IBM. And this system has a capability of merging concepts of artificial intelligence with standard mathematical representations of problems. So what we do is when we look at the possibilities of efficacious treatment for something like corona or looking for a virus, what you want to do is you want to follow a lot of different paths because you don't know which path will be the one that pays off. So in particular, at Oak Ridge, they've looked at 8,000 different compounds. And with a supercomputer, they've culled that down to 77 compounds in just two days. So those 77 compounds then go into a wet lab where they begin doing the experimentation on it to see if they work or not. So give me a sense. Normally, from going that 8,000 to the 77, how long would it take if you weren't using a supercomputer and artificial intelligence? Years. Years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it would cost a huge amount of money because you'd have to build up a wet lab to, to look at every one of those 8,000 compounds. Now, practically, what you would do is you'd make a guess. You'd hope your guess was good, and then you would start down that path, but you'd have no real idea of whether you're getting close or not. And Dave, how, do, do, you, do you then wait for the, the wet lab portion of this to do combinations of those 77? So, so the, the 77 are each looked at, uh, and then you can, while the wet labs are being operated, you can look at um, early results from the wet lab experiments, and you can begin to do mathematical modeling speculatively about how those wet lab results might manifest themselves in a real um, uh, live application. Uh, you can also begin to explore combinations of these things as well, as you said. So, so how do you get from there to a vaccine? I mean, are you basically understanding the mechanism by which the virus works? It's, it's a variety of things done in concert. So you look at things sort of in our time, you know, a second, a minute, a day. But a lot of the modeling goes on at extraordinarily small pieces of time, 10 to the minus 14, hmm. you know, at atomic level, atomic kind of clock speed. And you begin to build up your understanding of the systems by operating, simulating things at every one of those time steps, then aggregating them up to clock time, where we're generally used to, and then looking at that over days, weeks, et cetera tremendous amount of compute power. That's just a molecule by itself. Then you look at it in concert with the disease, then you look at it in concert with the human uh, organism, and you begin to look at the interplay of all these factors to understand what the probabilities are of having a successful event. Has this ever been done before? So, yes. In fact, IBM worked um, with some of the uh, previously emergent new strains of flu. Uh, the last uh, H1N1 thing, I think, that came out of Mexico. We used our technology at that time to do some modeling of the evolutionary pathway of that. So if you look at flu viruses and the flu shots that you get every fall, it's a matter of looking scientifically at what's going on, but also predictively at how that virus will evolve over the course of time. And you take a shot at where the puck is going to be, and then you build your virus for that and hope for the best. So it's a complicated mathematical construct that you need to examine. And how does the organization of this take place? Is this an IBM initiative? Is it an IBM in concert with the government? Uh, tell me more about, about how that works. The system that's deployed at Oak Ridge National Lab was a partnership between the Department of Energy and IBM to construct the computer to cover the vast array of scientific endeavors they pursue. This particular example is of a scientist working out of the University of Tennessee on the system in concert with the researchers at Oak Ridge National Lab uh, we provide just standard support for the operation of the computer at this stage. There are many other activities going on inside of IBM, of course, that will look over the course of time at different factors regarding how you manage pandemics, et cetera. But the Oak Ridge problem right now is really being driven out of the University of Tennessee in Oak Ridge. So, so I won't hold you to this because mm -hmm. I'm sure there's no knowable answer to it. But in success, if it worked perfectly, could you take time off that 18 months? And if so, how much? I think, there, I think there are a couple of ways to look at this. One is, in the absence of the computer, you're basically throwing um, darts at a dartboard in the dark. <laughs> and so you don't know if you're even close to the target. So what we've done is we've winnowed that down quite dramatically. So that now the lights are on, you know where the dartboard is, you know what the darts are in your hand, and you can start taking a shot at it. That's a tremendous advantage for the scientists that are working on this. The 18 month is, a lot of it is human trials and so on. Mm. So it's not gonna do so much to compress that time span. But what it has done is it's really accelerated the starting step. 
So instead of waiting for a year to come up, or two years or three years, with that set of 77, we've got it in a couple of days. That's a big step forward. Who owns this technology? Who owns the IP in this? So, so the IP is all being generated by the scientists involved. Um, the Power9 technology, which underscores the computer, is all IBM. Mm -hmm. The ownership of the system is Oak Ridge National Lab is an agent for the Department of Energy. Have you tried this for other medical applications besides viruses? You said you did it with the H1N1 out of Mexico. Are you trying it with other medical applications? Yeah, we have, we have a group called Watson Health inside of IBM that looks at the amalgamation of artificial intelligence techniques with uh, technologies like Power9 to bring that to bear on a variety of problems, whether it's cancer or other kinds of uh, medical issues. The same technology, though, has been used in the industrial sector. It's used for fintech. It's used for the design of airplanes, cars, um, problems in computational chemistry. And one of the very rich areas is material science. Material science percolates through our economy. And the ability to understand how these different materials are working and how to invent new materials is a critical dimension to how you drive the economy forward. Same technology can be used for that.